types of issues that Dr. King and others who fought for this during the Civil Rights Movement believed in. That's what they stood for. Equal justice under the law for all citizens, irrespective of race, class, and irrespective of race and religion. And so we stand on the shoulders of Dr. King and those other giants who braved their lives to engage in nonviolent, peaceful demonstrations. And we also recognize that while we celebrate Dr. King for his strong stance against injustice under the law, Dr. King faced arrest. In fact, he was arrested more than 30 times for engaging in civil disobedience. We applaud heroes like Rosa Parks, who refused to give up her seat to a white man on December 1st of 1955, and yet we don't pay attention to the fact that Rosa Parks was persecuted under the law. We don't pay attention to the fact that Rosa Parks has a mugshot for standing up for what she believed in. Just as the law was used to stifle dissent and to punish those who stood against injustice, we see the same thing happening here today. Rather than it being 1964, it's 2014. But we feel as though not much has changed. Even though we talk about living in a racial and a post-racial society, the question is, where's the evidence of that? Why are African Americans and pe other people of color who attend events at Mall of America who go shopping there subjected to racial profiling on a regular basis, which has been well documented? Why is it difficult for so many African Americans walking in our community, particularly in places like North Minneapolis or the east side of St. Paul, to walk with a sense of pride and dignity and to not constantly have to worry about whether they're being harassed by police, subjected to unlawful arrests, being searched in violation of their constitutional rights, and concern, uh, concerns about being subjected to excessive force. These are the types of issues that we deal with in the state of Minnesota. Not Mississippi, but Minnesota. And it's time for a change. Thank you.